My name is Kylie Asa Fendrick. I get up and I stretch and I don't want to get up, but I, after that I put my clothes on and I go eat breakfast after that. I brush my teeth. She plays a lot with me. Sometimes she puts the toys up and we play this cool game. When we were in kindergarten, we made up this game called Sticky Sack. I like turquoise because it's pretty and bright. I like to read Junie B. Jones and chapter books. You don't like thriller. I, I love don't. thriller. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I want to be a doctor. One night my mom was brushing my hair in the bathtub and then some of it started falling out. And then the doctor said, I have alopecia. First time I found out we were having a baby, I was beyond thrilled to know I was gonna be a father. I found out I was having a girl, and she came, and um, it changed everything because I was responsible for another human being. When Kylie came, it was it was amazing. Obviously, it changed our, our lives, and you know you never feel like you're ready for it. But I think we felt we felt ready. It was like I had this life that depended on me, and outside of this life depending on me. Um, It was just special. It was like, it was the most wonderful gift that God had ever given me in my whole entire life. It was incredible. I would say the first four months was incredible to me because everything I had heard about infants and babies was opposite of what was going on because she never cried. Um, she was just a bundle of joy and she always smiled. She was just a happy baby. And then you start to see her recognize things. Um, she starts to crawl, she stands up, she starts to walk, and you're excited about all these different things, but at the same time, it's like, slow down a little bit, kid. Like, you're getting a little bit ahead of yourself. You know, for me, a girl, I was just thinking about shopping. And, <laughs> you know, being able to go buy all the dresses and do her hair. When she was young, you know, we went and did photo shoots just because it was our daughter. She was a little girl and we wanted to create memories. So we did that and we came up with incredible pictures. Um, and so many people used to approach us all the time. You know, does she model? You guys need to get her into modeling. This child is absolutely gorgeous. And this is when she had a head full of hair. I used to always say she may be beautiful on the outside, mm -hmm. but I especially want her to be an incredible person on the inside. He said that all the time. And I knew why you said it, but you, it's like you, it's not like you had a premonition, but you, you always said it. We had a lot of people approach us about her being a, a baby model and a, a child model. And we, we looked into it. I mean, we had an agency want to represent her and we went on, we did go to a couple photo shoots and she, you know, was looked at like the, maybe the ideal baby, I don't know. She had a beautiful head of hair. And right when it started to, where we started to get phone calls and it really started to not blow up, but maybe the start of it blowing up, that's when her hair started falling out. It was um, the week of Kylie's second birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kylie. And this one 
time I had given her a bath, just like normal, and I did the leave-in conditioner, and I started to comb through her hair, and I know, you know, hair would fall out a couple strands here or there, but this time was different, and there was just a, just a larger amount of hair coming out every time I combed through it, and so I took that hair out, and I would place it on the side of the tub, and then I would comb through it again, and there would be another kind of clump of hair a little bit, um, and I would put that on the tub. By the time I was done, almost around the whole ring, you know, the whole edge of the tub were pieces of hair, and it, I knew it wasn't right. It was at the point where it was like, okay, we have to call a doctor, uh, because I don't know what this is, what this might be. We contacted a dermatologist, and we went in for a meeting and that's when they told us that she had alopecia. And to be honest with you, I had never heard of it before. I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what it meant. It means that you have an autoimmune disease um, where you don't have any hair but you're not sick. She had no other symptoms of being ill or sick or, or breaking out or anything. It was just this hair loss. She probably knew that we were paying more attention to her and her head and her hair, but I remember breaking down crying. And she was fine and happy and laughing, and when she saw me cry, she started crying. And I hated that because I thought, she's so strong. You know, if she's gonna be strong about it, who am I to cry about it? You know, I have to be strong for her because she was reacting from my reaction. So that was a lesson for me. We went to the doctor. They prescribed a steroid cream and the cream basically was going to help potentially build back some of this hair. But there was also, also the risk of it thinning out her scalp. And after we did it maybe one, two times at the most, I said, this is it. Like, we're not doing this anymore. Um, I would just rather her be her natural self opposed to this potentially harming her or making her head painful, so we never applied it again. That was it. There's no cure for it, but that was one of the only possible chances that maybe her hair could grow back, and because of the side effects of it, we didn't care. Like, we were starting to embrace the situation. She said, I'm going upstairs to cut it, and it, it hurt me. I'm gonna cut it off, I feel like will feel better. And I went upstairs and I cut it off and I, without, you know, being careful with her scalp, got down as close as I could to where you couldn't see it. And when I came downstairs, it was like we exhaled. I remember her coming back down the steps with her and I was just like, wow, this is incredible. You know, this is it, beautiful. It was liberating. I don't know if there's a better word than that because we were holding on to something that was not coming back. I was like, this is that last piece of of her as we knew her with hair, you know?
felt like, oh man, someone's about to look at me. I better go hide. When you started to notice it more, or not us maybe, but outsiders started to notice, maybe there's something wrong with that little girl. Um, that's when really I think everything started to change for me. I started thinking more about her and how would she be perceived and how would she take and understand that perception of her. I feel like I'm just as good as everybody else and I go with the flow. Maybe she was so oblivious to the stares and the pointing and the laughing. And then my mom tells them, don't stare, it's not nice, and then it makes me feel better. But me, I was so upset, I was angry about it because it didn't matter that my daughter had strands of hair. She was still incredibly beautiful to me. It was hard. You know, when we would go out in public, um, everyone would look at her and kind of just, you know, some, some kids would point and stare and, and laugh and look. And adults, we would get that, oh, like very, you know, I'm so sorry for you and your situation. And I knew what they thought, you know, they thought she was sick. And you know, that probably helped because it reminded me that she's not sick and how really blessed we were, even though we had a child that didn't look like every other child. I was like, just upset that people would stoop to the level of making fun of or laughing at a child. And it happened, I mean, you'd be surprised. You know, you would think maybe just kids just out of curiosity would stare. But I remember going to a, a big um, grocery store chain and there were three adult women and two little kids, and <laughs> two little boys, and they were probably about six or seven years old and one little boy made a comment, pointed at Kylie and made a comment about her not having hair and he started laughing. Um, like the parents look at me, they try to find me whenever the kid says that, every single parent. And all of the adult women started laughing at Kylie, and she was like two years old. I couldn't believe what I heard and what I was seeing, and I really wanted to say something, and I wanted to confront them. But I thought, you know, I was afraid she had heard him, and I wanted to console her, um, and I cared more about what she thought as opposed to correcting it with them or, or letting them know how I felt. Um, but that happened to us all the time, and it was, it was unfortunate, it was sad. So it was time for Kylie to go to pre-K, and so we knew we had to find a school for her, and I didn't, I, I didn't know where to start, but I didn't want to go to a school that was really big. I, I was thinking maybe public school would be too big of a school. Our concerns included Kylie feeling comfortable in this environment and how the students would react to her and were they compassionate students and did they have anyone else that looked different in that school or would she be the only one? I went on a couple school tours and I walked into Good Shepherd and I really got that feeling in my gut as soon as I walked in. But I wanted to, you know, be fair and, and really look around and, and talk to the principal and talk to the teachers. And But it was a gut feeling I got right away. I was excited because I saw there were so many fun things to do there. One thing that really made me feel good about the school was the fact that she said all the kids who saw Kylie were just very nice to her and there weren't any negative stares or pointing you know people were just being like gracious and kind and and very um, just very welcoming they didn't know we were coming the, the kids it's not like they were told hey there's a little girl coming and you have to be on your best behavior so when you're out in public and you're used to the stares and the laughing and you walk into an environment of close to 500 students and when these students see her, they're smiling at her, telling her that they like her headband or that she's cute. And this was like almost every student. 
it was like you finally found a comfortable place for her. It felt like, it felt weird. I felt like I had butterflies in my tummy. We had just opened a preschool for the first time. Um, and um, so the first day of school was kind of scary for all of us. I was crying the first day because I didn't want to leave, because I wanted to leave and I didn't want to um, leave my family. So what first happened was um, my friend Madison, she came over and um, she started talking to me and then we became friends. It was very different to see a child without hair, you know, on, on the playground at dismissal. Always spoke with her, very friendly, very sweet. But there was a part of me that was a little nervous because not being in that situation, what if something did come up? How, how would I react to other children or, you know, what would I say? It is someone different in your class and you think, wonder what this is gonna be like. So you wonder, is it gonna be a challenge? Is it gonna be easy? But she has taught me so much. After just a few just a few days, they would look at her, they didn't even see that she didn't have hair. Like they looked at her and they never even saw the bald head. It was, they just saw Kylie. And when you hear that, it's like, that's what you want everyone to feel and think and see when they look at your daughter. The idea that we had for this letter that we wanted the teachers to send out to all of the parents at the beginning of the school year was one that um, would explain what alopecia was, but it was important that the students understood it. And so we felt that instead of it coming from our point of view or from an adult's point of view, we would write it from Kylie's point of view. Hi parents, my name is Kylie and I am your child's new friend and classmate. I wanted to tell you a little about myself so that you and your child will know why I look different from other kids. When I was born, I had a head full of hair. Initially, it was really straight, but as time went on, it became very long and curly. Right before I turned two, my mom was brushing my hair in the bathtub to get the tangles out. and my hair started to come out. We didn't know why I was losing my hair, so we went to my doctor to see if she knew why. We learned that I had an autoimmune disease, disease called alopecia. This just means that I have no hair and very little eyelashes. Good news is that I am not sick and this is not contagious. I never, ha I never have to go to the doctor for having alopecia and there is no medicine that can grow my hair back. I know that having no hair is different and I often see kids and adults look at me because they are curious. This is normal. When I have the opportunity, I tell them that this is how God made me and that I am still beautiful. I am writing this letter to you in hopes that you will share this with your child and tell him or her the same thing. I talk about having no hair and it would be happy to talk to my new friends about it as well. I only become sad when I hear friends teasing me or saying things that aren't nice. Hopefully this will eliminate some of the, of the curiosity. Thank you for taking the time to read about alopecia. And if you have any questions, I know that my mom or my dad would be happy to talk about it with you. Sincerely, Kylie Fendrick.
they, they sent a letter home mm -hmm. to the parents just kind of yes. explaining what was going right. on and, and what Kylie was dealing with. And so it gave the parents the terminology mm -hmm. also to be, right. be able to talk to their kids if they had questions. After the letter went out, it empowered them so that they didn't have to be like kind of whispering or talking about it behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. They could then help if the question arose or if they were in a situation where maybe someone didn't know or, you know, they could they could speak to it. Of course, alopecia is a big word for four and five year olds, mm -hmm. but she did, you know, she talked about it a little bit too. And we talked about it gives you a great opportunity to talk about differences at, you know, some people wear glasses, some people, you know, we, we talked about all the different things and they're very satisfied with that answer. Sometimes they want an answer just mm -hmm. to know, Yes. but then they're okay and they're satisfied and they move on. I think this is where our religion comes That's into exactly play. exactly what I was going to say. It, it um, we are blessed to be able to, you know, talk about God created each one of us and we're all different, we're all unique and we all have talents and it's our job to find out what our talent is and use it to our best ability. She was our student of the day and she sat down next to me and they bring things to share with the class that tell, you know, like pictures of their family, pictures of their pets. And then she said, and the other thing that I have to share is I'm allergic to my hair. And I thought, this is interesting. And she said, some of you are allergic to dogs and cats. I'm allergic to hair and my body doesn't let me have hair. So that's why I'm a little bit different than the rest of you. And the kids just sat and nodded their, you know, and they just accepted her. And I thought, here is this six-year-old teaching me how to be accepting of something that life has dealt her. And she just moves on with it like it's nothing. And it, it's, it was a true lesson. In kindergarten, she, she could read, and that's huge, when you can start school and read. So she was like a rock star. I think one of the biggest things I noticed right off the bat was that she was um, very much a rule follower, always and obedient. That sounds, you know, like such a strong word, but Kylie was always doing what she was supposed to be doing. Her academics are very strong. They She's are. one of the top students in the class. And so by that, that also is a role model, a leader. Yeah. And she I can pair her with someone who's not as strong of a student. And right. she's very nurturing to them and very right. caring. And this is just a child. I didn't see I didn't see hair. I didn't see a bald head. I saw a beautiful little girl who was very compassionate, who was a very strong student, um, was such a plus to our classroom. It's an inspiration to me. I mean, it's I look huge. at her and it inspires me. Mm -hmm. And it, it keeps me wanting to be a teacher too, because I think she's making a difference in my life. I mm -hmm. hope I'm making a difference in someone else's life too. She's so impressive because mm -hmm. the way she handles it helps them know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't make any big deal about it because mm -hmm. she doesn't. They don't feel, they don't go around feeling sorry for her because she doesn't feel sorry for herself. Because the kids have been with mm -hmm. her for three years now, mm -hmm. they're very accepting and, you know, if, if there's anything that goes on, it's not necessarily a bullying situation. It's your typical mm -hmm. girl things, things right. like that. We haven't had any big issues. Her circle of friends grows every year because we mix it up every year. You know, we, we're blessed to have two of each grade, so every year she goes into a new situation. She still has a core circle of friends, but then she moves on and there are other girls and, you know, she can't help but have lots of friends. She, uh, she has so many friends, you know, when you walk into school, it was cool every day to walk through the hallways because older kids, younger kids were running up to her, saying hi, giving her a high five, um, hugging her, and the reception was just overwhelming, you know, and in the beginning, I'll be honest, I, I really felt like it may have been because they were being sympathetic, but one I really started understanding that they just fell in love with who we loved. Tina and Jose have done an excellent job. Mm -hmm. they, they know the challenges that she'll face mm -hmm. as life comes on. 
and they, they've prepared her and they've made her the strong person that she is. Mm -hmm. And I admire that because they've paved the path for her and now she's taking it and going and you can just tell. It, it's going to be a smooth transition. Will she maybe have some problems when she gets older? She might. People may question. But she has embraced it so I think everyone around her embraces it. Well, hopefully her dad will get her a really cool convertible. <laughs> Every woman's dream to be able to drive a convertible and your hair not be messed up. So we're hoping her dad pulls through on that. But I think she's going to be just amazing. I think you'll see her on homecoming courts and involved in athletics. And academic-wise, I see her just being top of the class. I see brilliance in the future for her. I see excellence. I see so many opportunities. I agree. I think the sky is the limit for Kylie. I think that she truly believes she can be anything that she puts her mind to, like that nothing can stop her. And that's it's an amazing feeling as a parent, especially when you know that she might have challenges, you know, based on how she looks. So it's really cool to know that she's not going to, you know, she how she how she represents herself now and acts, it's, there's no challenges are going to stop her. That's a great feeling. She wants to be a speaker um, who speaks about alopecia, and I, I see that happening. I see her teaching the rest of the world. Um, and I think that's why God put her on this earth, to teach the rest of us uh, a lesson. I want to um, spread it all around the world and let everybody know that you can be you. One day, Kylie came to me and she simply said, Dad, why are there no magazines or no television commercials or shows that show people like myself? And I basically explained to her that, you know, there was a traditional mindset or um, a certain way that people who either cast videos or movies or television or photo shoots, basically what they deemed was normal, but that she could still be successful, whether it was through media or entertainment or through law school or you know as an executive or whatever it was she wanted to do, she could be a successful individual. And I always try to preach that to her that it's important for her to just be focused on the fact that she, number one, has knowledge, that she's intelligent, to always carry herself as a wonderful young lady, and that everything else will come into play for her, and that she will be successful being who she is. If, if a young child like yourself, a boy or a girl, or an adult who has alopecia, or to ask you how are you able to be so confident, so brave, what advice would you give them in terms of how they need to maybe be in order to um, just be happy with who they are? Um, don't feel back down about yourself just because you look different. Everybody looks different and some people are mean. It doesn't matter, just be yourself. My goal for UCBU is to be able to teach the world that it's okay to be yourself. You know, in this day and age of social media and everybody emulating everybody else and following everybody else, it's cool to be an individual, but to be an individual with purpose, positive purpose. I would like to see tons of kids all around the world saying, like, I can be myself, it doesn't matter. So I really want the world to understand through hearing her story that you can be this vibrant, incredible person and be successful and um, just help change the world through kindness and positivity um, and just help make the world a better place.